In a world plagued with leadership deficits, the African Center for Leadership, Strategy and Development, Center LSD, established in 2010, is one of the leading non-governmental organizations in Nigeria with a mandate to build strategic leadership for sustainable development in Africa. The center, in our quest to empower citizens for a transformed society, carries out its program through capacity building, research, advocacy and campaigns, youth inclusion in politics, governance and decision-making process over the years appears to be a Herculean task in Nigeria. Despite having the largest segment of the population in the country represented by young people, the political terrain in Nigeria is characterized by political actors between the ages of 50 and 80 years of age. In an effort to tackle this reality, the African Center for Leadership, Strategy and Development, with support from the Ford Foundation in 2018, embarked on an initiative to train 240 youths in Bayelsa, Delta and Edo states of the Niger Delta region. At the time we started the Center LSD Youth Participation in Politics program in partnership with the Ford Foundation. I was still the executive director of Center LSD. The project was implemented in three states, Edo, Delta and Bayelsa states. And in the three states, the total for the three states was 240 persons. Um, the project was um, conceived because of our research and understanding of the challenges that young people face in general development and specifically in participation in politics. Um, we discovered that um, youth development has been neglected over the years in Nigeria. And this has translated to youth exclusion in economic issues, youth exclusion in, in politics. And um, if you look at the history of Nigeria in the First Republic, you had people uh, like Alaji Shehu Shagari, uh, Waziri, uh, Umbu, who were political leaders in their early 20s. Uh, but we see over the years that youth are completely excluded from the political process. And when we uh, conduct our research, we, we, one of the things we found out was a lack of capacity. Uh, lack of access to information and that's why we conceived the project to build capacity of youth in the Niger Delta to participate actively in politics. The need to create opportunities and a platform for youth participation in politics and governance in Nigeria cannot be overemphasized. Hence, this training by African Center for Leadership Strategy and Development was carefully designed to build the capacity of young persons interested in governance and politics so as to prepare them towards asserting their voice in the decision-making process and developing the necessary skills and knowledge needed for effective leadership. We did a survey, uh, reviewed the literature, and we developed a curriculum that we thought will, will be able to prepare youth to, to participate in politics. And it was revealing and eye-opening. Even after the, the approval of the project, one basic challenge that we had at the initial stage was uh, the recruitment of youth who are supposed to participate in the program because the youth bracket that was clearly delineated for the project is uh, age 18 to 34 years. And so when we sent out the, the call for application, it was really very difficult for some of the youths. We selected the youth based on a lot of criteria. Uh, in the first trainings, we discovered that even young people who were aspiring to political positions 
in their parties had not seen a copy of the party's constitution. They had not seen a copy of the Nigerian constitution. They had not seen a copy of the party's manifesto. Over the period of the two years, um, we have done a number of activities. Um, we have done a baseline survey to know the level at which um, youths have participated in uh, um, elections. Um, we have done um, town hall meetings, we have done several advocacies, we have done trainings, we did trainings in each of the states twice, um, targeted at um, 40 persons per training. And so we did six trainings, two each in the um, three focal states. The project, training curriculum and modalities for the trainings were carefully designed and all encompassing as it was aimed at awakening the interest as well as groom the youths in the Niger Delta towards better political engagement and involvement in governance. We trained 80 in Edo, trained 80 in Delta, trained 80 in Bayelsa. There are pluses anyway in a lot of the places, particularly in Edo and Bayelsa. We had over 40, we had over 80. In total, we trained um, 261 um, youths and we built their capacities. They were trained on the details of the Electoral Act. They were trained on democracy, on participation. They were trained on public speaking. They were trained on, elect on management of election, how to manage their electoral um, aspiration, how to, how to contest election. So all of these trainings they were given. Armed with the requisite knowledge, some of the participants courageously contested for political positions, however, not without experiencing some challenges. The only challenge that uh, we say we, I had was that the training came a little bit um, late towards the election. I, we had short time to prepare. One of the challenges we faced was um, funding to purchase our interest and nomination forms, funding for campaign from one community to the other, funding for basically everything, because everything you need to do as um, somebody that's vying for a political office requires fund. The war chest that uh, the two political, major political parties had. We didn't have it. Even with the one, one Naira, two Naira, we were able to collect. Because they are already, uh, uh, um, uh, they already have structure and they are already in power. They have this, they have this financial war chest, you know, for which they were able to even buy votes. They, they bought votes, paid their agents, you know, paid uh, security and a lot of that. They were able to do far more in terms of uh, adverts and all of that. It wasn't that easy. Sometimes we have to go all day without food. <laughs> we'll do all that is all because of what we believe in. The only place where we had challenges was that electioneering in Nigeria is too expensive. Just imagine, I raised a million naira to buy my nomination form as a youth. On the election proper, it's, it's funny that um, the level we have, it's a bit difficult for us to, uh, given the chance to run a, 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 a fair election credible and fair election. I had a lot of challenges which uh, had to do with vote by. I was victimized by they have to hack my accounts, they hacked my phone lines and so much happened because of that incident because they've come to discover that I'm well informed how the process should go. I am a married woman and I am a mother. Few challenges that came to me as a person first and foremost were, were um, when we had to travel a whole lot out of the states, I have to go an extra mile to make my husband see reasons why he has to stand by me and to God be the glory, 
he actually did. My children psychologically needs to be brought into the picture as well. That also counted. And of course, funding. The challenges notwithstanding, the project recorded major successes, one of which was exemplified with the story of Innocent Anidi, who is currently the minority leader, Delta State House of Assembly. We had uh, also major successes because some of them took up the gauntlet and ensured that they actually do not restrict their participation in politics to just uh, expressing their interest to contest, but some of them actually contested. And some also use the lessons from the training to develop themselves entrepreneurially. Some of them have to go into farming. Some we are not fortunate to skate through, but for those of them that skate through, particularly one of them who skate through, ended up winning a House of Assembly seat in Delta State, and that is uh, the current minority leader of the Delta State House of Assembly. I did a training with Center of LSD, which was sponsored by Ford Foundation. That was 2018. But before then, I have a story to tell politically. Like I told them when I was in Ford Foundation training, I never think I'll be a politician, but today, oh, here I am, I'm a politician. Before becoming the House of Assembly member, on a daily basis, my thought, my thinking, everything is just, how will I, be, how will I manage to become a leader in my constituency? How what will I do if I become a leader? But today, here I am, as an House of Assembly member, not just an ordinary House of Assembly member, the minority leader of the Tate House of Assembly. It's something that is not easy to come by, but by the grace of God and everybody I have behind me, and coupled with the training I had with the center of LSD, it was a very fantastic one. Because before I went to that training, there are a lot of things I see politically differently. So when I went for the training, I was not, I was not surprised. My friend just called me and said, okay, fine, you are going for a training that has to do with leadership. I said, okay, fine, let's go into it. When I was going at the first, I was just seeing it as a normal thing, but when I got there, when I saw the entire exercise for three days, it was a fantastic training. Because there's one thing we, we, we all youth believe that's fine. There's a saying, which is what I think was the first, uh, was the first uh, this thing we did, the first program, that we always call ourselves the leaders of tomorrow, we are the leaders of tomorrow. But the tomorrow will never come. That's why everybody has to come at endlessly to support any form of organization like the Center of LSE, which have made me who I am today. I think they have a major role, at least they played about 30 to 40 percent of me who I am today. Because today, like I told them when I was in the training, I don't think I can stand in a podium and address anybody. But today, to my own self, I think I'm trying, I'm improving. And I think if I work more on myself and I have more of those training, I think I will improve more. And in totality, let's give them all the support that they want and see how youth can come more in, in a government position so that we can change the narrative of this country. For some of the participants who unsuccessfully contested for political offices, the training served as a tool to improve their lives as well as enable them to positively impact their sphere of influence. I also was privileged to have been one of the participants in the Youth Can Lead training that was conducted and organized by Center LSD in partnership with the Ford Foundation. Well, um, prior to the training exercise, uh, in 2018 precisely, I, I dared to dream. I was inspired to contest for the House of Assembly elections. Now, guided by my aspirations, I was privileged to be given an opportunity to participate in the training exercise uh, that took place for some days in Wari, Delta State precisely. And uh, it, during the training exercise, I, I was privileged to, to broaden my perception about what I need to do in actualizing my vision. Uh, the training exposed me and other participants on some of the nitty gritties that we never have had our minds to, uh, that ordinarily guided us. They told us on what we needed to do. They armed us with the re relevant facts and information that would guide us as young aspirants. And more importantly, 
they gave me reason not to back out of the race. And I left that training, you know, revamped, better equipped, and more passionate about my passion for my people. And um, when I left, a lot of challenges came up that would have ordinarily derailed me from the course. But for the experiences I gathered during the training, and they believed, inculcated in me as a person in the course of the exercise, kept me going. And I proceeded to purchase the, the forms, though quite expensive. Success is not measured by one's victories in life. It's measured by our ability to learn from the events, our actions and inactions in the pursuit of our aspirations in life. And for me, I didn't see myself as a failure, but I saw myself as somebody who succeeded at the end of the day because I learned new things. And I've learned how not to lose a primary again if I even want to dare to contest in the future. But above all, uh, the program, the gains for this program is that it, it, I can identify one, two, three, four, five youths who also participated in these programs that are doing stupendously well. Most of the youth who participated, I know of one uh, Paul Oyiborume, who also participated in that program, we were, all, we, we were all there uninformed, but left there better informed, more inspired, well equipped, and more passionate. Now, Paul Oyiborume, you know, at that time, he's a young man from Sapele local government area in Delta State. You know, though he, when he came to the program, frankly, he became a monster in terms of daring to dream. There are some dreams that you would dare to dream that makes you look like an abnormal human being. After the program, when Iboru men left to worry and said they were going to contest for the uh, national youth deputy, youth, the, the national deputy youth leader also of the APC South South at the national level, and the young man, despite the odds, despite the inexplicable travails that would have been enough to dissuade him, was resolute. He stood to the end and refused to back out. And as we speak today, though he didn't win, but as we speak today, he's a factor in the APC national body in Delta State. He has participated in a lot of APC activities. These days, he goes for participating in the national, he's always involved in elections in virtually all the states. The national body usually drafts him into the committees and and, and he has contested virtually for several other positions even after that one. As we speak today, he's also contesting for a position at the national level. So Paul Eiborome is a product of that training. My experience before the training was, I've, I'm a young man who loves politics. I would say that it's, it's in the blood because back then in the university, I was class rep. Student rep, I proceeded to become the student senior secretary general of the university. I always have this zeal for politics, but my perspective of politics is quite different before I encounter, before I attended the Youth Can Lead uh, training program sponsored by Center LSD and Youth uh, and Forward Foundation. Before, I usually think politics is all about interest, wanting to make money, fast money and other things, and those do things uh, fraudulently, uh, violent and different things. Not until I attended the Youth Can Lead the, a training program sponsored by Center LSD and Center LSD and Ford Foundation, when I was introduced by Dr. Otive Eguzo, since then, when I attended the program, I will tell you that my perspective towards politics changes immediately. Before, I used to think that politics was all about interest, interest but not until I attended the program, I now understand that politics is all about what? Service to your people, community, and to humanity. If what really transformed into the training, the training was, I don't know how to say, the first thing I learned there was when I encountered the word, politics is all about service. Up to date, I still argue with people in the political scene that they will tell you politics is all about interest. I tell them a lie. Politics is all about 
service because in the course of the training, we pass through different, uh, uh, we had a counter towards different uh, uh, lecturers that came to train us, some talked about politics, some talked about the financial aspects, some talked about the godfatherism, some talked about too many things in the politics which encompass everything about policy, especially in the Nigeria sector, whereby if you don't have a godfather, you cannot become anybody today. But after that training, I told myself one thing, I said, I came here to learn, and everything that I've been learning here, I'm going to practicalize them. So in the course of the training, the training really transformed me. And today I can tell you that I'm a great beneficiary of it because my orientation towards politics in the Nigeria sector, sector is quite different from other conventional politicians. And that is what makes me outstanding in it. Because today you see people who tell you about politics, all the bad, you must have a godfather to go. I tell them, no, I don't need a godfather to become anybody. I will aspire to become who I want to be. That is what the center, LSE, and the Ford Foundation taught me. And since then, I can tell you it has been up, 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 up. Before, I used to play the local politics. I started from the world level. Here I was the world uh, assistant secretary, the world PRO, AJU leader. My perspective was never to grow. I don't believe that one leader must come and take you. The, but since that program, in fact, <laughs> today I will say I'm a national youth leader of the All Progressive Congress. Thanks to the Center LSD and the Ford Foundation for giving me this opportunity. Because without that training, I think maybe I would have still been in my village or in my ward, languishing there, believing that police are the bad service, police are the bad one a, a man from a, from up who just come and say, hey, poor Oibome, can't be this, you can't be that, you can't be this. But that training transformed me and make me believe that one, I must be financially stable for me to participate in any election. Because when we're in the training, it made us understand that when you are contesting an election, first, no matter how you contest, even though you are spending money for all the uh, campaign rallies, and this, you must ensure that you keep money for election deal. The lecturer was telling us that you must keep money, you must save, because if you don't save money, you finish your money the election day, holy God no, you might just run out of cash and at the end of the day, you will just lose. Of which, in Edo State, when they were doing too many things, I brought out this idea and I told them, ah, whatever we are doing, let us keep for the rainy day, especially on the election day. And to God be the glory, the idea was taken. And I will say, wow, well, thanks to Center LSD again for another uh, uh, training, another learning I learned from the Center LSD. And again, since then, outside that, the, the, the terrain, the confidence, the boldness, everything that the, the train gave to us, you must be confident. You must believe in, in it first. In fact, I would say my life today, that's the day I see Dr. TV Igbozo. Sorry, I'm mentioning Dr. TV Igbozo because you see, until Dr. TV actually made me, because while we were in this IPAC group of APC, Dr. TV, the, the Honorable Benjamin Ogbalo, you know, they don't say, ah, no, poor, go there, go learn. You know, let me use the normal language, go there, go learn. And since then, I've been wonderful. If I ever tell me today, I'll be sitting down with governors, senators, president, and everybody in the meeting. I will not believe myself. All thanks to Center LSD for the opportunity, privilege given to me. Honorable President Anidi is there. KK Jagbo is there. After the training, I was motivated that being on the sideline to criticize or to play the politics as a way of meeting an end is not the best, but I have to be in the mainstream to change the narratives. I pick up the State House of Assembly form under my political party, APC. After all the electioneering process, being a first-timer, I must learn lessons, which I learned. I lost at the primary, not really losing. I learned courtesy of the leadership training. Then, after the whole primary, the whole electionary process, the leadership training made me to understand that contesting, losing, or winning is not the end, but consistency. So I was consistent. 
and my consistency was noticed. That is what earned me the position I am today as senior legislative aide, not just to a senator, but to the deputy senate president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And a lot of other youths who came from Bokola, I may not be able to know all their names, because it was a program that involved youths from across the 25 local government areas in Delta State. So I will only be able to mention a few of them that I have personal relationship with that I, I also, but I know a lot of youths, you know, benefited from the program and I in person also benefited. Now, the gains also is that the training also made me to remain consistent and not to give up and to believe. They also told us that we may not just walk into where we are desiring to go into, that we should not expect it to get it on a platter of gold, that we should ordinarily expect some of all these negative vices. But when they happen, when they happen, we shouldn't give up. We should be consistent. We should show character and we should show that we have indefatigable spirit on us, in our, in our system, not to give up. And that was when I lost the primaries, while other persons were going about filing cases in court. One of that thing, I, one um, experience I got in the training is that we should dare to show leadership at all times. We should dare to show difference in quality leadership. And that if we say that we are the youth and the future of this country, then we must do things differently. And when I lost the primaries, other persons were engulfed with bitterness in other constituencies. They wanted to destroy everything. They all went to court. But I looked at the chances that if I had even gone to court, the best I would have gotten was to deprive my party of fielding a candidate in that election. Now, based on the virtues I was able to get from that training, I swallowed my bitterness. I swallowed my pains. And I refused to go to court. I showed leadership. I congratulated the man that eventually got the ticket. Because in life, they say we stoop to conquer. And I supported him. I campaigned for my party. And my party won the elections. In fact, I even went to court to defend the man in the tribunal up to the court of appeal level and we got judgment for him. I was able to show leadership. So, since I asked LSD, gave me that platform. They revamped my thinking faculty. They made me a better person and have made me a better, a better politician. Now, because of my consistency in not backing out, that I, which, which is the case with other persons who backed out because they lost primaries, I didn't back out. I showed character. I showed commitment. I showed consistency. I showed indefatigability. And by, because of these qualities, I was able to exhibit. I sat down in my house. I got a call that the Deputy Senate President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Senator Ovi Omar Gege, found me worthy, found me worthy to be one of his legislative aides. And I was given an appointment as his SSC on constitutional and legal matters. And as I speak to you today, that portfolio has further given me further exposure politically. It has also bettered my thinking faculty. It has also given me better opportunity to affect the lives of our people and to also be of value to Ugele North Constituency 1, to Delta States in general. Now, if not for Center LSD, I would have backed out. I would have not remained in the picture. I may even have even gone to court. Or I would have said no, I would have given up and I would no longer be interested in politics. But those qualities kept me going and they still keep me going till date. And I'm very grateful to the organizers of that training. And it happened in 2018, but I can say that the, the, it is still speaking to date, even at this moment. The training came as, a, as an answer to my prayer. As a youth, after graduation, there's no, uh, the next major question is, what do I do? What's the next step and all that? The training changed. It was a total transformation in the whole of my life, financially, emotionally, 
In fact, it covers every aspect of my life. Um, when I came financially, Dr. Otibi Iguzo said something about savings and investment. And after I finished analyzing it, I found out that the money I spent in a week on recharge card, like Acera and every other thing, Gala, I could actually save some. Why? Because I was thinking maybe when I have big money, that's when I can actually save when the money comes in. So I started saving 1,500 general weekly. And I've been able to do it consistently since 2018 to date. I was able to save 1,500 general weekly. So at the end of the year, I invested it. I had to invest it in I Invest, the federal government um, platform. I had to invest it there. But if I didn't attend the program, I wouldn't have been able to know, okay, I have to save. Because I thought maybe when money comes in large quantity, that's when I'm supposed to save, when I, when I become very rich. Another impact that um, Sitaire's um, Youth Can Lead program also did to my life was um, to be outspoken, to, to not be scared. There was one of our speakers we had. We had his name was... Um, his name was Iyanwe, Professor Iyanwe, Jesus Iyanwe. When he came for the when he came for the program, he talked to us. He said, "Not every, not everyone one of us can can um, run for for political office now. First and foremost, we need training. Not just we need mentorship." And he said, "We should volunteer." Another aspect that also important in my life is the fact that I'm able to train other young girls. Okay, this is what you can do. You can because when I tell people that I'm a farmer, the next thing they do is just farmer. And I tell people, yes, I'm a farmer. So now what, what, what we now do is, every farming season, I now train young girls and I train women, not just young girls, I train women. So what I do is this, is a free training. If you're a young girl, you want to learn how to farm, we empower you after the farming, we help you with seeds, help you with chem and fertilizers, help you with chemicals for your farm. So I think that, that, has, that has been my major landmark, my major point, because I'm able to see that if people are impacted, imagine if I did not attend the training, I wouldn't have been impacted, only God knew where I would be now, struggling, trying to look for a job and all that, but this time around, I've employed people, I've trained people, and I've also helped other young women to see themselves as, because normally my mayhem was just finish school, get a job and get married. But no, I'm not seeing myself as an important person. I see myself that I can make decisions, that can influence others, and not just me. My expectation was not just met. It's, uh, it's over exceeded because what I expected, okay, I was expecting this, but I got this. That was what I expected. It was more than, it was more than what I want. It was more than what I imagined, what I, what I, what I imagined. So the decision was made and exceeded. My observations from the training, for me it was a first time experience getting involved in a training that would sensitize and enlighten me on political participation. Um, the training by Center LSD was an excellent one. I really want to commend the organization for that initiative because some of us who got involved in that training had no idea on the practicalities of the electoral process. And we didn't understand it on the step-by-step -step basis. But Center LSD, through that workshop on Youth Can Lead, they sensitized us and they simplified the process of participation in the electoral process as well. So that gave me an insight that I could participate in contesting for public offices, not only in Bayelsa, but in Nigeria, which is my civic rights. The program was awesome. Knowledge was kind of, was gained, and today we are really, it has made me a better person, and with so much, most especially what leadership always entails, that's one of the areas we have been lacking as a people, and because leadership, I came to understand now, is all about service delivery. And you must always know, as anything apart from service, then there is no leadership. And through this program, I've been able to understand that leadership itself is service. And today, I have been able to serve my people, and I'm still serving my people. So to me, the, the program was awesome, and the program, the, uh, the expectations from the program was highly met. Uh, proud to the program, uh, to the training, I had, uh, I had uh, some of some misconceptions about leadership and all that. And also, immediately we started the program. Then I was also trying to prepare for 
a program which uh, was my, uh, one of uh, my summits that I did immediately after the uh, Youth Can Lead program. I did one of the first uh, uh, Edo Youth Summit, which I did in Benin. And through, due to my training and what I got from, uh, what I learned from uh, uh, guest speakers and all that who spoke at that program, it gave me an insight on how to go about it. So, through some of the skills I, got, I, I was able to gather from that program, I just went all out. I, I was able to engage the churches, and I can tell you that that program was bid for 10 a.m., and by 9.30 a.m., that hall was filled to capacity. Professor Eddie Ragbe was part of the speaker, the DG, the director for AFCC, uh, the commissioner for so many commissioners, youth, and all that. Some months of When they came, some, they were used to coming to program late. And some of these are some of the things we learned about uh, uh, leadership and all that. So coming to a, an event a few hours after the event has started, that's not leadership. So, 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 so these were some of the things we learned. And when I was doing my advocacy in churches, I also made sure that I shared this experience with them. And I said it again, at 9.30, that all was filled. Immediately, I, I was the one who started calling the guest lecturer that, ah, he said, have you started? I said, the, pro, the hall is even free to, to capacity. This, we are having an overflow now. They were shocked. And on that day, we were able to empower about, uh, we, they, 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 we were able to empower about three persons we, for a startup program, for an, uh, a business, a startup business, uh, which you will not get more than 100,000. All this, we are, all the ripple effect from my training from the youth can lead uh, uh, this thing. And also, from there, it became uh, uh, a very uh, good thing for me. Having achieved that feat, I said I had to take it further. From there, we had decided to start the anti-corruption fight in Ovia. And from Ovia, we started getting endorsement, we getting calls from people in diaspora that you are doing a good work. We wanted transparency, accountability in people, public office overs in Ovia. Two weeks or months after the program, I was also invited for an anti-corruption program in Lagos by Action Aid and all that. So we also went there on illicit financial cash flow. So through there, the, the, my profile started increasing. And from there, I haven't engaged the system politically, trying to bring accountability to the system, trying to bring service to make sure that government miss up to their responsibility to the masses, calling out government at all levels. Through constant engagement on my platforms, my Facebook platforms and all that, then I was, luckily, uh, uh, I got a call from the wife of the governor. Through there, we were able to uh, empower over 200 persons at uh, the Public Work for Nigeria program. Through there, I was able to empower 100 women for the ND program uh, organized by uh, in conjunction with the Edo State Government and the National Directorate of Employment, we were able to give some of our aged uh, uh, women and uh, small scale uh, women, about 100 of them, 10, 10,000 as grants for, for, for their businesses. A training of the 16th to 18th, April 2018, Center LSD three days capacity building for youth that are interested in politics. Throughout the training um, that was all embedded in about seven courses, I got to know that leadership, it's more about influencing those at the sphere around me. And this I can do with a whole lot of activities that are, are a lot of activities that is part of me, I begin to contribute in my little quarter. I was opened, my eyes of understanding was opened. And after the whole training, I caught my fire, I got exposed and I was ready to launch. And immediately, the thing that I learned is that I must first and foremost start playing my politics from the credits. Got myself involved in the party that is in my locality. I started attending meetings, became a card carry member, started paying my dues. And because of the fire that Center LSD had already put in me. But there's something I will always refer back 
to what Center LSD deposited in me. It was not a thing of gender. It was a thing of productiveness, what you can offer. And because of what they saw, I emerged the sole candidate for the Edo State House of Assembly, Oredo East constituency. Yes, indeed, I did not win that particular election. But for me, it was already a victory. There are other things I learned beside the political terrain. I got to know that leadership is more about service. And in serving, you have to give, you have to give what you have. And that led us into holding so many seminars, so many workshops, so many um, programs. We went street to street, back to back. We went into schools. We had a project all over the Edo South to be able to conscientize the younger mind on the need of having interest in leadership and politics. Our women were not left out. And I have always had my reasons to look back to 16th and 18th. I can never forget that day in my life of April 2018 where I came in contact with Center LSD. It was a different ball game altogether because they changed my mindset. They exposed me. Yes, a lot of us were there, but I in particular, I had my goals and my visions and they were met and that exposed me. And the fire is still very much burning. And seriously, I'm not letting go. Not now, not anytime soon. I did not just gather from Center LSD all about politics, but first it was more about leadership. And I discovered that what can I do to begin to impact and affect my generation at a point in time? I discovered that Kerry Heart Initiative will give me an opportunity to bring these people closer to me to serve in this capacity. Suffice you to know that this very month, November, makes it exactly one year we opened this office. So it is not a coincidence that we're meeting here again after one year to see what we have been able to achieve, a whole lot. And I know that um, um, a lot of persons are already volunteering for us of a truth. I think one of our, our volunteers was able to get um, this echoes job by volunteering, no, three of them exactly at the central hospital. So whenever they have their time, they always come and they always go back to say, this is what they have also gained from caring out. So um, um, Center LSD is actually having grandchildren already because they betted Grace, which is Caring Heart Initiative, and Grace is also betting and transforming this community. Yes. Take it anywhere. I am also proud to say that it was my encounter with Center LSD that was the first time I actually took flights. And it has always been flight, flight, flight. For me, it's another beautiful thing that happened to my life. It may not mean anything to you, but it means a lot to me. Uh, before the program, actually, I uh, am one of those that have heard many times that the problems of Nigeria is actually leadership and um, for me uh, I've already known that um, before this time the best time Nigeria actually experienced growth uh, prosperity was when young people were leading uh, when we built the superstructures the airport the seaport uh, the refineries where, where young people were actually in the position of leadership so I already have the consciousness of youth going into leadership so when the program Youth Can Lead uh, by Central LSD came, it was just more or less like a preparedness meets an opportunity. So I was lucky to be selected. And uh, the training went on. And to be candid, I never knew the kind of training we were going to have. It more or less was like a training, uh, normal, the usual leadership training, until we got there and uh, the training was, was uh, the bomb. I, uh, got training in virtually everything to prepare us for uh, contesting elections. When we started the training, I understood what it means to be a leader, what politics is all about, how to participate in the election, how to choose a party, how to stick with your party, how to raise funds, and uh, various strategies to actually win an election. So before the training, I never had intention of actually contesting in 2019, although I wanted to um, participate fully in, in politics. But after the training, or the youth can lead um, um, training by Center LSD, I thought it, I was like, okay, what next after this training? Uh, I, I was, we were charged, and I had all the knowledge that, that 
I had. And the next thing to do is to take action. So I took the bull by the hand. I contested under African Action Congress AAC, a fairly new party, though small, but we were able to make impact. And um, I did not win the seat, but I won. I won in the sense that that gave me an opportunity to be known in my community. Today, I am actually the secretary of my community. I sit in the Council of Chiefs uh, because of the training. They had to bring me into the Council of Chiefs. So I'm the only person that is not a chief that sits in the Council of Chiefs because of what I've learned and what I'm bringing to the table. So I would say that the training actually helped me to, to develop myself personally. And with the training I've gotten, I was able to replicate my kind by retraining some other persons to, to do like what I am doing. I, all this that I'm saying that I've said cannot be possible without um, the help of Centre LSD, uh, the vision of uh, Dr. Etive. I, the skills I learned from Centre LSD, I was victorious in the game. After I left the training, I have to establish more businesses. I went into fish farming and also opened a foodstuff business. From there, I was able to generate some funds. And I also set up campaign, my campaign team, which they also helped me. I made budgets for my campaign because we are taught on how to make budgets. You cannot win election when you are in a weaker party. And the PDP saw my strength and I joined force with them. And with me and the skills I learned, we defeated all the opposition party in my area. And the governor did him fit. He saw my ruggedity, he saw my vibrancy, and, and Center LSG pushing for us also. Because after the program, we were retrained again. And I learned, they called me some time ago, that after the election, that they'll be coming, who can they visit, so that they can push to make sure that youth are given appointment if you did not win your election. And they really came. They pushed for us. So God be thy glory. I was made a member of the Delta State Land and Waterway Security Committee. Kudos to Center LAG. I ran for the 2019 election on the um, SDP in Bayesa State Ekerimo Constituency 3. Before the training of Youth Can Lead, I had this ambition to want to run for my constituency. Then the training came up and it became a self-recovery -re training for me because I, begin, I began to discover that there are more I can do. Uh, we thought how transformative youth could make change in the society. And we also taught um, a structure of um, election, how election is run, uh, communication skill, uh, and things to be put in place. And Center LSD also helped us to train our delegates. After that, I was also nominated as a, the deputy governor in my state under ADP, Action Democratic Party, um, for the governorship election also, because it has been discovered that I'm not only knowledgeable, I, have, I also have the capacity. So it has been a growth ever since then. Now I'm an advocate, uh, I'm a, young, a girl child advocate, and it's fine, I'm, I'm doing fine, but thanks to St. Elise because of the knowledge. Now I'm also part of the leadership trade school, and just building my capacity towards the 2023 election. The participants also share their gratitude and appreciation for the training as well as recommendations for future engagements. So my advice is it should be done annually and I want to say a very big thank you to St. LSD and Ford Foundation because I'm immense, immensely very grateful because I'm thinking or oh, rather I'll say they brought me to this platform, they gave me the platform, they gave me, they brought me to this position where I am today. We are not just an employer of labor. I because I'm supposed to like 
my my colleagues that we finish school together, they're still looking for jobs. I even had to employ one recently for, for my farm. So now I'm not an, an employer of labor. I'm no longer I'm, I'm not I'm not in the I'm not dependent on anybody. I have my own, I have my own cash that come in at the end of the day. So I just want to say a very big thank you. And not just me, my family, everybody's excited. My mom is even proud to tell you, like, my daughter is a farmer. In fact, everywhere she goes to it, she doesn't say, my daughter is a farmer, a, my daughter is a farmer. I just want to say a very big thank you to Sintana Lesley and Ford Foundation. And God bless you, Rich. I want to thank Santa Lesley for taking the initiative to train young persons to go into the leadership sphere in our country. I also want to thank and, um, the Ford Foundation for supporting this initiative because without their support, financially and otherwise, people like us would not be able to have benefited from um, the initiative from the Youth Can Lead workshop that was held here in Bayausa State. Oh, honestly, I must say, Center LSD. Oh, I want to first thank the founder of Center LSD. I want to thank the workers. I want to um, uh, Lawa Monday and so many of them, uh, Victoria, and um, so many of them. I cannot remember all their names now. I want to thank every one of them. Center LSD. I want to say this, huh, my dear. Center L, if not for Center LSD, the mind, I, like I said, it was after this training that I, I had to break out of the share. I came out of the share which I, I, I was, <coughs> that, that caged me before now. Center LSD gave me the platform. They gave me the push. The training was wow. They gave me the push, they, they came after the training, they did follow up and they did, they, they make sure they follow us up uh, uh, all the way. I want to say a big thank you to the LSD and to the Funders Fund Foundation. I want to say thank you all. Attaining a better quality of life by Nigerians depends on the investments they make to develop leaders, especially in the political circle. It's our responsibility to collaborate and create the future we desire to see by prioritizing the development and upliftment of young people in the political space.